I am so excited. My game topper came today. We're about to unbox it. We're getting everything ready. This thing is a beast. It weighs 91 pounds. You ready, yeah. Travis? Yeah. This is the Mycroft 48 by 72 standard topper. It's the largest one they make. Oh, I'm so excited. Here, let's open this up. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, there's like skulls on it. That's awesome. All right. We got two more mats here. Oh, look, they're labeled. Cups. Cups. Rails. This one here has the, the cups. Yeah. And this one has cups too. Is there anything stuck to the bottom? Nope. It's got some like rubber on the bottom, but I think that's supposed to be there. Yeah, the rubber is what helps it stay on the table. Oh, this is quite large. Okay. Holy smokes. Guys, this is big. It's a little dusty. These are the dice towers. We have to assemble them. Yay, I want to do that. Oh, look, these are the shields also. Oh, there it goes. It just slid right together. Okay. You just unscrew it, slide it halfway in between, and then tighten it. That's it. Yeah, that is very nice. Can I put this other dice tower together? No. Okay, we'll race. We'll see if we can figure it out first. So who won? Travis won, but he got a head start. He was already assembling before I even took it out of the package. Let's see how it works, Travis. Get some dice out. There, um, the, the pieces keep falling off a tiny bit, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue on to hold it together. And also the stain is so fresh that... Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh, it completely fell apart. Hey, so I'm using um, a toothpick to put some liquid nails on each of these pieces, and I am then attaching them together and wiping off the excess glue, if there is any. This should help hold this together so that the, um, so it doesn't fall apart when you play with it. Why liquid nail adhesive instead of wood glue? Like liquid nails or wood glue would be fine. I chose liquid nails because I feel like the glue is a little bit thicker, so it's gonna fill the space between the cracks more. And also, it dries a lot stronger. You see there's like excess glue in there. So I take the paper towel and like wipe it really good. Okay, and then you can take a clean toothpick and like scrape the extra glue off in all of the cracks. Nice. There's a few sections that are like just trying to bend apart while it dries. So I'm just wrapping some painter's tape around it uh, just to kind of clamp it together while it dries. Once it's all dry, we can just pull that tape off. It's mainly just this bottom section here. Looking pretty good. Yeah, one down, one to go. The dice towers dried really well. They are very solid now. They hook on the table very easily and then you can drop your dice in them and they roll right out onto the table. The Star Wars Rebellion board, which is normally really big, looks small on this. It's so big. Is this the biggest board we have? Most likely, probably. I mean, how much space is on the sides of them? Does the box fit on both sides of it? With some space to spare. Wow. What do you think, Kenzie? I like it. Which mat is your favorite? I like the space one a lot. The space one is really cool. The table topper is awesome, but it now makes the table a little bit too tall. So you can see it comes up to about here on my chest. So when you're playing games, it just slightly too tall. So what we're gonna do is take about three inches off the bottom of the table, and that will make the game topper sit about the same height that was previously before we added it to the top of the table. So you can see it added about three inches here. So what we're gonna do is cut off the bottom of our table about the same amount there, these little nubby things here.
We got the legs cut off, it is perfect now. Instead of coming up to here, we cut about three inches off, it's now about here. And you can lean on the table, it's the perfect height. This table came slightly higher than a standard dining table, which is why we had to cut three inches off the legs. Most tables are about two to three inches lower than ours. I'm gonna show you guys a few close-ups now of the mats being swapped out and some of these player uh, component and drink holders. Let's start with swapping the mats out. I'll show you how easy it is to do this. So you take one here and you just roll it up. So this is the blue one. You just roll out the new one. That easy. Fluff it out and it is now swapped out. Let me put the space one on now. They have five or six other designs you can choose from. They've got a desert one, a snow one, and several other colors as well. So let's take a look at the component trays now. This is a double component tray, and you push the cup holder up from the bottom to lift it up, and it pops right out. And you can turn it over like that, and it's got this wood grain on the back, or you can leave it on the other side with the cork to put components in. Over here we have a goblet holder which fits a wine glass nicely. It also has the component tray. Now this one doesn't push up from the bottom, you just have to pop it out, but it can flip over if you want it like that or leave it at the cork side up. And this rail system is really cool. You just put it in and push down and it locks into place. The single one is just like the double, but it's a single one. And it holds a soda can, a beer glass, any kind of cup nicely. Next, we have the player shields. These are meant to go in between players to um, shield what the other player has. Now, why would you do that? Well, there's this little ridge here, and I'm gonna show you, I've got Love Letter here. Let's say you're playing Love Letter and you've got your two cards out. You can put them like this in the little slot, which is really cool. And let's say the other player is right here with these two. Well, you can place this player shield in between so that they can't see what you have. This goes in the notch there, and then it goes like this, and then this is a little key. It's slightly smaller in one end, and you slide it in, and it locks into place like that. Now, here's the problem. This was a good idea, but I can totally see those cards there. They really don't block it at all. Of all the things at the Game Topper, this is my least favorite, and if I were to buy it again, I wouldn't get the player shields. Everything else, top notch, absolutely love the Game Topper and all the components, including the dice tower. Check this thing out. So this dice tower goes on like this. And then you just drop dice into it. And they just roll right out onto the table. Isn't that cool? Can you do it again? Do it one more time. Game Topper is awesome. The package I got is called the Reichenbach Falls package. And I got all the components because I wanted to see what they all were like and let you guys know whether it was worth it or not. And I would say the Game Topper, 100% worth it. The extra components you can add on, up to you. I added the goblet holders on. And as I mentioned earlier, these player shields, not, not worth it in my opinion. The dice tower, totally worth it. In fact, I almost wonder if it's worth it to have four because sometimes we're playing a game and we'll have one in this corner and one in that corner. And the person over here can't reach this one. So I actually would prefer to have four dice towers. Instead of getting these player shields, get four dice towers. These things are freaking awesome. And the fact that we had to glue them together, that's actually normal. It's just like when you buy a broken token insert, and sometimes you have to use a little wood glue to glue it together. Totally normal, these things are solid once you glue them together. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and review of the Game Topper. 
Let me know if you have any additional questions. I would be happy to answer them. Go check out Game Toppers on GameToppersLLC.com. They do a great job. And by the way, this is not sponsored by them. I just bought this with my own money and wanted to show everyone else how awesome this is. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.